really matters? That might be the most important question you can ask. So let's talk about it. Welcome to What Really Matters podcast, Everyday Spirituality with Karen Wyatt. Thanks for joining me here today. I'm going to be talking about how to set boundaries, especially during the holidays, since we just made it through Thanksgiving and we're getting ready for all of the winter holidays that are coming up. And I'm actually talking about this because it's something I'm really working on right now and something I need to learn about. So I've been doing a lot of reading and thinking about how I can do a better job of setting boundaries for myself this year. And I thought maybe, maybe there would be someone else out there who would benefit from hearing about what I'm learning. Though oftentimes, really, I imagine that Everyone else seems to have good boundaries, but me, it feels many times like I'm the only person I know who's not good at saying no to other people or telling someone what what I need or want. But I realize it's probably not just me. So maybe there's one or two of you out there listening who will benefit from this conversation as well. So part of my issue is I've been a people pleaser my whole life, and that has to do with my family of origin and certain dynamics going on there. But I grew up feeling like I'm responsible for everyone else's happiness, and everyone else's happiness matters more than mine. So I've spent most of my adult life working on that issue and trying to develop better emotional intelligence, trying to do more self-care, and really learning how to be stronger with other people and how to have some boundaries around myself in order to protect myself, but also to keep my relationships healthier. So I have put a lot of effort into that in the past, but what I have learned is that all of that work falls apart every year during the holidays. And so I'm trying to be proactive and think it through in advance. I think the reason is because I love the holidays. I really have like a childhood fantasy about celebrating holidays. I I really love them. I find them very meaningful. I love all the traditions. In my family, we celebrate Christmas, but I love all the music. I love the decorations and the lights. I, I love everything. I love baking. I love the meals. I love parties. I love time together with family. I love giving gifts. I love all of it. But the problem is I can't do all of the things that I love. And I re- I realize one of the reasons I love it is because it's a good way to please other people too. When you're someone who puts on parties and meals and hosts people and wants to give gifts to people, uh, it makes it an easy way to keep people happy, to please them. So I understand some of my devotion to the holidays is tied in with my need to be a people pleaser. So all of that can get better if I learn how to set better boundaries and I keep working on that. But one of my issues at holiday time is that I don't really know how to say no to any of the events that are happening around the holidays. And I don't know how to say no to myself. I want to do everything. I want the house to be decorated perfectly. I want to bake all of the cookies. I want to make the best meals. I want to have separate celebrations for Christmas Eve and Christmas morning and Christmas day. I want all of it to be perfect. And so I recognize that every year I set myself up to become overstressed and overtired and to end up actually not enjoying all these things that I say I love because I overdo it and I don't allow myself to say no. So this year, as I said, I'm working in advance, I'm at the last minute, but I'm working on it now to try to make this be a better holiday season for myself, but also for others, because I realize when I get myself into a state of overstress, then I get annoyed and irritable, and then I'm not so fun for other people to be around. They can feel my stress and my tension. 
And maybe it ruins the holiday for me, but also for all those people out there that I'm trying to please, that I just want to have a good time and want to be happy during this holiday season. So here's what I've been learning. I've been reading a lot of psychology websites about boundaries. So so first of all, uh, that when our boundaries are not strong, Here are four things that we struggle with. First of all, telling other people how we feel out of a fear of rejection. Um, Feeling burdened by how other people perceive us due to the fact that we're people pleasers. We want them to like us, so we worry about it constantly. Did we do the right thing? Do they like us enough? Um, And then constantly striving to make everyone happy. So it's a constant ongoing process. And this is what happens to me in the holidays of doing more and more work to make sure everyone has a good time or everyone is happy. If ever one person is not happy or has a bad day during the holidays, then that can tend to make me fall apart and blame myself because somehow I feel like I didn't do do it right. I didn't buy the right gift. I didn't make the right cookies. I didn't plan the right meal. So that kind of striving uh, is crazy making and exhausting. And the fourth struggle from having poor boundaries is a tendency to just propagate negativity in relationships and not be able to work on it or talk about it or resolve it. So staying stuck in some kind of negative habits in relationships. So all of those have been things that I've dealt with in the past and worked on quite a lot. But as I said, the holidays have a way of making all my progress and all my work fall apart. So here's what I've learned that I need to do this year is first of all, plan ahead. So that's why, that's why I'm working on this now and why I'm talking to you about it in hopes that I will learn something as I'm telling you what I've learned and then to get really clear about priorities. So what I have had to recognize realistically is I cannot do everything that I want to do or would like to do. So I am going to make a list of all the things I love about the holidays and try to put them in order of the most important to the least important things so that I can look at that list and perhaps I have to remove some things that are at the bottom of the list that are least important and take them off off of my expectation list of what I can accomplish or what I can do and really become more of a minimalist around this holiday and limit somewhat how I'm going to celebrate it in order to make the entire thing better and more positive. And so, and it's perhaps like I love putting up holiday decorations, but this year perhaps I'll still put some up, but maybe just not decorate every square inch of the house. Maybe I can do a little less and give myself a couple of hours. When I've done with that, that's it. I've, I've done what I can. The house will look fine with just a few things being up instead of, uh, of the whole room full of decorations that I actually have um, down in the basement. I don't have to put all of them up this year. So, so that's the idea of getting clear about priorities. What can I do without? What could I alter to lessen the stress and the time that it takes to accomplish that priority? So one of the psychologists I read talked about listening to gut instinct. And so I realized that I often bypass whatever my body's telling me and it's always my mind Uh, spinning, telling me I need to do everything. But sometimes within my body, I have a feeling of, oh, no, I dread that actually. You know, I really dread baking four kinds of cookies this year. I don't want to do it because I don't want to eat that many cookies myself or whatever reason. So remembering to listen to my gut and not just be in my head as I make these plans and these priorities. So 
another psychologist suggested, emphasize the things that will make me feel good. And so, so it might be that there are things on that list that don't take as much effort or as much stress that are really fun. So if I, when I can find things that give me a lot of joy, but don't cost as much in terms of time and stress, those might be the activities to really emphasize this year and to focus the holiday celebration around. Um, one article also suggested think about the consequences of the choices that I make and the actions that I choose. What will the consequence be? So for one thing, if I put up 10,000 decorations in the house before Christmas, I'm going to have to take all of them down and put them back in boxes after Christmas, which is really miserable and really something that I hate. So if I put up fewer decorations, I won't have the cost down the road of taking all of them down. So that was a, a really good suggestion. And of course, learning how to say no to certain invitations and activities, recognizing that it's not possible to do all of the things that other people might suggest or want to do. And um, this article that I read suggested when you need to say no to someone, start by saying, oh, unfortunately, I won't be able to join you for that. Instead of having to use the word no, when you, it's a good thing for a, a people pleaser to be able to say, oh, no, oh, unfortunately, because it, it, it tends to soothe the other person's feelings right away because they recognize that you're not happy about saying no. It's just the way things have worked out that it's, it's necessary to say no. So I, I think that will work for me rather than just saying, nope, I'm not coming to say, oh, unfortunately, I won't be able to make it this year. I like that. That will work for me. Uh, that same person emphasized how important it is to make it clear to other people. And that's a way that I have failed a lot in the past. When someone has asked me to do something, I tend to hesitate, waffle a little bit and say, oh, maybe I'll try to come. I'll try to be there. Yeah, I'll try to do that. And then I leave other people hanging, not knowing for sure if I'll follow through or not. And then I almost always force myself to follow through because, because I recognize I didn't say no to them. So I really feel like I have to go now. So a maybe answer is a yes answer. I've had to learn that. And only an unfortunately no answer will do if I honestly don't want to go or can't go. And I have to learn how to make it clear and not leave things foggy or vague or confusing. And that will be really helpful to me if I can actually accomplish that this year. And then this person also recommend checking in with myself frequently, like stopping along the way. Hey, I made this plan. I had this list. I thought I could do these things. How's that going? Am I still feeling okay? Do I still have enough energy? Am I having fun and enjoying it? Because I might need to revise the list as I go. So the next most important thing is being able to say what I need and how I feel. And of course, that's something I've been working on for a long time to do a better job communicating. But as I said, during the holidays, I somehow seem to regress back to a place long before I ever started doing any boundary work. And I forget all of those skills. So the reminder from this author was to use I statements when you need to tell someone how you feel to say, I feel blank and describe the emotion when you do this, describe the behavior because explain why you have that feeling over that behavior. And instead I need this. So I learned this a long time ago, but it's not something that, um, that I utilize that often, but that's really important right now as I'm looking ahead at keeping everything in balance. So in order to communicate what I need and how I feel, I have to be able to recognize those things, which I think my plan is that I'm going to journal about that every day because 
what I need will change from day to day and how I'm feeling will change from day to day as well. So even if I do this long-term planning for the holiday season itself, I think every day I need to journal and check in. How am I doing? How am I feeling right now? What do I need right now? Otherwise, I won't know what to communicate to other people. One of the suggestions I read, which was a little bit of a surprise to me, but it's such a great thought is remember to bring your adult self to the holiday celebration. And I realized that's probably one thing that happens for me. I regress back to to kind of my child self when the holidays come up because I have this childlike love of this this season of the year. And that's why I lose all the skills that I've developed in the past. So if I can remind myself every day to bring my adult self to help guide my child self through these holidays in a healthier and better way, that should make a big difference. And then I'm recognizing the need for self-care and to make sure that I build in a little bit of time every day for myself and that I prioritize what I enjoy, what pleases me, what I like about the holidays. Like maybe I spend a little time and I listen to a couple of my favorite Christmas carols because maybe no one else likes those, so we never listen to them. Maybe there's a movie that I love that no one else likes to watch, but I could take time for myself and enjoy watching that movie myself. So I'm recognizing the way I care for myself will actually help fuel me and give me more energy for the things that I want to do for other people. So this is how I'm planning to make the holidays a little bit better this year. Um, Getting clear about my priorities, listening to my gut instincts, making sure I communicate what I want and how I feel, thinking about the impact of the decisions that I make, doing things that make me feel good, prioritizing those, the things that bring me more joy than stress, Uh, learning how to say unfortunately instead of just the word no. So I'm softening that a little bit to make it easier for myself, but prioritizing, making sure I communicate clearly with other people. And um, then that I continue to check in with myself and monitor how it's going and how I feel and uh, that I make changes in the moment as needed. So that's my little plan for setting better boundaries during the holidays. I don't know if you need this or not, but I hope that's helpful to you. And um, thanks for joining me today for this quick little session on boundaries. And also I have recorded a video that's on YouTube now called Self Care for the Holidays. And uh, you can take a look at that. I will leave a link in the show notes if you're interested. It's a one hour presentation on self care, which is what reminded me that I need to have better boundaries actually while I was creating that. So that's why I did this podcast, but I'll leave a link. You can go to the show notes for this episode and take a look at that little video presentation if you'd like. So until next week, remember that we're here for love. So face your fear, be ready for whatever life brings next and whatever this holiday season has in store for us, and love each and every moment of your precious life. Bye-bye.